Before we get started today, we just want to say to everybody, good morning, and may his mercy be fresh on every one of you today as we speak and share. And uh, we're glad to see all of you coming on and people still coming on. So uh, we're going to have a great time, great day in the word and going to share some great, exciting things. And I'm sure God's going to do some amazing things for us today before we're finished. Um, uh, we were noticing that a lot of people are, are viewing the teachings uh, every week. More and more people are coming on. And uh, even if they're not on Sunday morning, obviously different people are starting to tune in and we're getting lots and lots of views. So that's great. So there's people from uh, who we don't even know, I guess, that are viewing. So I guess they're your friends or other friends, but uh, it's exciting to watch what the Lord's doing. But um, we're more excited about you personally as a person. That's what we really care about. It's great to have lots of views and all that kind of thing. But the most important thing is how valuable each one of you are. And that's what we really enjoy the most. Um, no matter how much uh, the Unite continues to grow and everything, and it will, and it is, uh, but every person is valuable. And uh, we always want to keep that as our focus. And, you know, Jesus took time to value every person. You know, that's why the Bible says the common people received him gladly. And that means that everybody knew he was approachable. They sensed his uh, care, his love. Um, and that's what we want to be known for, that we feel that each one of you are so valuable to the Lord, that he cares so much about each one of you. And uh, that's what gets exciting. Um, I mean, sometimes uh, we think about all the different ways that Jesus ministered to different types of people different types of environments, uh, but yet in every situation, that person was, was a priority to him. So we want you to know you're a priority to us. We, we appreciate you. We care about you. We love you. And uh, we just don't want to ever feel like you're a number or, oh, let's see how, you know, no, it's all about you as a person. So we want you to know that. And uh, we pray that that will be always our motivation. And uh, all right, so we're going to take it away and <laughs> open up here with prayer. All right. You look great today. Thank you. You too. <laughs> all smiled up, all <laughs> colorful. All right. So we're glad of that. So, uh, all right, here we go. <laughs> all right. So, uh, Father, we just come to you and we humble ourselves before you. We say thank you. Thank you, Lord, that you are our Father and you're our friend. And you're a wonderful counselor. And we lift up the name of Jesus today. And your word says that when we lift up the name of Jesus, you will draw all people to yourself. And so we thank you, Lord, for being drawn closer and closer to you, to lift you up, to exalt you, to magnify you as the King of Kings, as the Lord of Lords, as the Prince of Peace, as the great I am, as the healer, as our deliverer, as our rock, our strength, our fortress, our ever-present help in time of need. You're a sanctifier, you're a baptizer, you're the glory and the lifter of our heads, you're a shield, you're a provider, And we exalt you today as Lord of all, Lord of all, Lord of everything. Be high and lifted up, Lord. Be high and lifted up in all of our hearts, in all of our minds, over this entire meeting, over every home, over this country. Be lifted up, King Jesus. Be lifted up. And we welcome you, Holy Spirit. We love you, Holy Spirit, precious and beautiful, wonderful, our comforter. Lord, we thank you that we can approach 
your throne of grace because the blood made a way. But we have access through you, Jesus, by your spirit to the Father, that when you were lifted up, we were lifted up. And now we're seated in heavenly places. So Lord, pour out the spirit of wisdom and revelation upon each and every heart and mind today that we can see from your vantage point, not from our own limited perspective, but see the way you see, hear what you hear, see people through the eyes of love, see people through compassion, see each other not for what we're not, but for who you've called us to be in you. So Lord, we thank you today. We say thank you in advance for what you're going to do because you're always good. You're always faithful. You're always merciful. You're always kind. You're always long suffering with us, Lord. You're always patient with us. Pour out your love. Pour out your love. Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus that we all know you deeper and deeper and the power of your resurrection. I thank you for childlike faith and childlike joy. I thank you for hunger today. Hunger for you. The immortal king. The glorious one. Pour out your glory today, Lord. Pour out your glory. Touch every single one of us in our emotions, physically. Let healings flow. Let miracles flow. Let deliverances flow. Salvations. Encounters with you. Let us see you clearly. The son of man, with eyes like flames of fire, passionately looking at us. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that your eyes run to and fro all over the earth to find hearts that are truly yours. Find them here, Lord. Find them with us, Lord. We turn our hearts and our eyes up to you, and we fix them upon you. We set aside every weight that would try and ensnare us, and we run. We run. We run forward into your arms of love. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your love and kindness. Let heaven be manifested today, Lord in every home. Thank you for speaking through us, for teaching through Pastor Dan, for pouring out the spirit of prophecy. Do a new thing today, Lord. Do a new thing. Old things have passed away, and today all things are created new. We yield to you, and we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right, well, good morning, everybody, and we're excited to have everybody on. And as uh, we go forth with the message today, um, I just want to, first of all, say thanks to all of you. And we both say thank you for every week coming on. And it's a great consistent group of people and some weeks we have new people some weeks we have people that we don't know some people we have uh, on here that sometimes they just come on by phone and we don't know who you are but it doesn't matter we're just glad for all of you that are on 
And uh, we just say thanks to all of you. And uh, we're just praying that every person today just uh, really hears what God has to say for each one of you. And hopefully every one of you will have some answers to maybe questions you have or things that we're going to discuss. And we've been on this series for guidance for a while because it's what the Holy Spirit really led me to teach on. And I felt very strongly that we were to be on guidance because of the times we're in. Uh, everybody wants to know what's what's happening now, what's going to happen next, uh, not only for themselves, but even for where we are going as a people, uh, where things are going in the nation. And so there are things that God wants to reveal. And um, so we've been talking about different ways to hear God. And we're going to talk about that a little bit more again today. But also we want to talk about the importance of not only hearing God, but also to make sure we're not deceived by anything out there that tries to take us uh, into a direction that God's not going. Because like I've been sharing all through this series, uh, there's going to be many voices and uh, many people are going to try to say things about what's going to happen next and what's going to happen in the nation. And it's really important that we're tuned in to what God has to say. And um, Jesus said, and I want to quote this, I don't want to put a scripture up yet, but Jesus said that in Matthew 24 and in Luke 21, when he was at the Mount of Olives and he was given, they called the Olivet message or sermon and he was talking about what to expect in the last days what it's going to look like what's going to happen and the first thing he said that um, a lot of people go down to the pestilences and all those type of things and i know but the first thing that jesus says in matthew 24 he said take heed that no one deceives you that's the first words that came out of his mouth take heed that no one deceives you for many will come in my name saying, I am the Christ uh, and will deceive many. So there's going to be deception all over the place because a lot of people are going to have to believe in something. You know, even atheists say they don't believe, but they really do believe. If they don't believe in there's, there's not a God, that's what they believe. So they believe something. <laughs> so everybody believes in something. But uh, the biggest thing that Jesus said to be aware of in the last days or in the last hour is deception. That deception is going to come in and try to lead. So deception is something that can appear that seems truthful, but behind that truth is really a lie. And it's a lie perpetrated by Satan himself. And he uses people to speak things to counterfeit real truth. So if Jesus said this, he said, be careful because he will try to deceive many and he will come in my name. So there's even going to be this great final battle of divine good versus human good. So we're going to have to really discern and know the truth of what God says and what his word says. And that's why it's important that we are really in tune with the Holy Spirit, number one, and number two, that we're in tune with the right people God wants to put us around. Because in the multitude of counsel, there's safety. So there's many voices out there. You're going to hear many opinions. Many things are going to come out. Many are going to say it's God. And uh, recently, the other day, um, and, you know, you're starting to see all kind of things come out now. Um, there was a person on here speaking on a, on a news clip that I saw in one of my videos on, on my uh, Internet. And he came out and he was having this debate with this other leader. And he was saying that everybody knows that even Jesus wasn't perfect. And he said this to a, a huge audience. And I just want to tell you, Jesus was perfect. He, he never missed anything. So, but even this guy, when he perpetrated that lie, it came across so like in a way that we all have to understand that Jesus wasn't even perfect. So how can we expect anything to go right in the world? And so, but little things are very subtle like that. So we have to be really aware 
that there's going to be a lot of things come out. Now there was a, a viral prophecy that came out, and I want to make sure I address this because we have to address these things. Paul said in the Word, he had to go into Corinth and he had to go into churches and he had to go in and he had to clarify prophetic words that were coming out, false teachings that were coming out. And Paul at one point said, hey, guys, what has happened to you? How did this deception come in here? I remember what I taught you from the beginning. And he said, I want you to go back to my gospel, what I taught you and be careful that you don't listen to this or to that and hold fast to the head Jesus Christ. So it's a really important time that we hold fast to that. And, um, you know, God gave me a word through uh, Dick Mills about in the, that the, the latter part of my life will make the former seem insignificant. So, you know, I, I hear these words, but I had to hold on to that because I waited and I waited and I waited. Because prophecies sometimes don't come across real fast or happen real fast for us, but you got to hold on to the truth and be patient. So now, um, then just recently, I've had a couple more words given to me to be a voice to leaders and all this kind of thing, leaders of influence. And it's kind of funny, the other day, um, I'm watching this uh, video of a man of God speaking at a, at a conference or a little thing they were having and he was there beside the president actually and here's a guy that the Lord had me minister to years ago and I had remembered not the whole word but I had sense to give him a word about reconciliation that he was going to be a major voice in that and he actually gave me a word about that as well and so there he is uh, speaking on behalf of uh, what he felt in his heart to speak and and it just showed me that that word took all that time to manifest but it did and I felt like God showed me that just hold on to things that God spoke in you and be patient and let the Lord deliver it and don't be quick to hastily believe everything that comes along but be patient and wait on the Lord so the other day this I guess it was a, a, about a month ago excuse me this prophecy came out which was very strong that by November, the whole nation was going to get way worse than it is now. And that people are going to have to store food and do all kinds of things and buy guns. buy guns and, you know, no house is going to be safe. And, and, you know, he said that the Lord really spoke this to him and that he had to get this out to everybody. So of course this went viral and the whole body of Christ had to take, a hold of this take a look at it but the bible says in um first thessalonians 5 it says this don't never quench the spirit so we aren't to do that don't despise prophecies we want to hear prophecies but then here's the key in that verse but it says test all things test all things hold fast what is good it says and then abstain from every form of evil so paul's saying if you hear a prophetic word whoever it is if i give one pastor said anyone else give you test that see if it bears witness with your spirit that's why we have the holy spirit who knows all things thank god for the holy spirit so i had done a study and i'm sure many of you had but the Bible says in Romans 8, the Holy Spirit will bear witness with your spirit. Now, I can say to every one of you today that you know something on the inside tells you you're a child of God. How many know that you know you're a child of God? Because the Holy Spirit is bearing witness with your spirit. You know that on the inside, something's telling you, I'm a child of God. Even though the Word says that I also believe it because I know something on the inside. I know that I'm a child of God. I might have never seen Jesus. I might have never, you know, had a vision. But I know in my spirit, I'm born again. I'm a child of God. Because the spirit bears witness with my born again spirit that I'm a child of God. So nobody has to convince me of that. I know that. Because the spirit bears witness with my spirit. So your spirit 
which is where the Holy Spirit lives, which is the born again spirit, where the life and the nature of Jesus Christ and the Father and the Son all live in your spirit. Your spirit is made to detect spiritual things. And then the Holy Spirit has been given to all of us to bear witness or testify or confirm or give us an acknowledgement when something is true because he's called the spirit of truth. So it also says in, uh, I want to get into, into this next week, but when we read uh, in uh, different prophets, one of them, Daniel, <laughs> Daniel, who I was named for, so uh, which means God is my judge. So, but anyway, but Daniel had an amazing, one of the most amazing sections of scripture We'll read it. We'll get into this next week. But in Daniel chapter 2, it says this. Uh, Daniel said, Blessed be the name of God forever and ever, for wisdom and might are his. And now listen to this. And he changes the times and the seasons. And then Daniel, the Lord said to him, And he removes kings, and he raises up kings. And then Daniel said, and the knowledge, and oh, excuse me, and he gives wisdom to the wise. So now who is, who is wise? Wise people are those that seek the truth, seek the word, and seek God to, to correct them to the right voices and relationships there to be connected to. And it'll bear witness. Like for instance, um, uh, there's different people God has led me to. Uh, Kenneth Hagin, I listened to him for a long time. He was one of the first leaders that when I was questioning different things about God, God led me by his spirit to read his book, The Authority of the Believer. And as soon as I read that, all kind of things got confirmed to me that I didn't understand. Uh, then from there, I went on to other different people like Bishop T.D. Jakes had a, has had a great influence on my life. Uh, Bob Yandy, and I could go on and on. Tony Evans, uh, who in the last couple years, I've really sensed a connection with him, to hear him. And so we, we, God can connect us with all different people, but your spirit will start to lead you to certain people that God wants you to listen to in certain seasons and times of your life. So that's what he's saying here. He said, God changes times and seasons. So right now, we want to be really tuned in to the Holy Spirit, to his word, to the right relationships, the right voices, and the right leaders, so that we are hearing the counsel of God for direction right now for where God is taking us. And um, so the Bible says that, uh, that through Daniel, he said, I will give wisdom to the wise. And then he says, and knowledge to those who have understanding. So the more we... We strive to hear God, seek God, uh, get in his word. Like everybody that's on here today, that you're here because you're seeking God. You're here because the spirit is bearing witness that I need to be faithful to hear what God's going to say. And then other people after this Zoom is over are going to tune in and, and listen to this. So there might be a person listen to this uh, Pray, believe, maybe this afternoon or Tuesday, and they're going to go, wow, that was the word I needed to hear, and they weren't even here on the Zoom. But God is not ever going to be limited by time or space. He just is, here's what God wants. Anybody that's hungry and is seeking first the kingdom, he's going to make you wise. He's going to fill you with wisdom beyond your natural intellect. And we need to be wise to discern What's of God? What's not of God? Isaiah 5.20 says in the last days, he said, be careful. He'll say what people call evil could be good or what they're calling good could be evil. He said, so we're going to have to really discern what God's saying. So this message today is going to be, how can we discern what God is really saying? First to us individually, then to us maybe as a family, than to us as a group of people, to us as Unite, to us as friends of Unite, to then the 
United States, to the world. But the first thing I want to share with all of you, you know what gives me hope today? I am first a citizen of heaven. Thank God, even though I live in America, America is not my home. And I would just like to go on record here to get a little people, maybe some people upset. Everybody that says, well, America, this, America. Thank God for America. I'm glad we live in America. But let me tell you, everything that's written in the Constitution or in America isn't totally really what we are to live by. We are to live by the word of God because we're citizens of heaven first. That's the kingdom of God. That's what we live by. And there's a lot of things uh, in America, and we love this nation, and thank God we're here. But if we go by all the different laws and principles that everybody thinks is right, we aren't going to necessarily always have the right answer for the right things in the right situation. So because we're citizens of heaven first, we look to the kingdom, the king, that's the government that we're under. And the government we're under is ruled by Jesus Christ. He is the king and the ruler. And guess what? We are his servants and sons. And we live by his kingdom. Are you ready? His kingdom rules or regulations or principles are what we live by. And they're written in the word of God. And those principles that are in the word of God, who the king himself tells us to live by, those principles are always going to bring out something good in the end. They're not going to bring out evil. They're going to bring out hope. Uh, so having said all that, the Bible says that Jesus uh, is, is going to bring forth truth in these last days. And for those who are seekers of truth, those who will seek him, he promises us. He said, I will make sure. I love this. And uh, I think it's in uh, Luke. Yeah. It says in Luke that not a hair on your head shall be lost if you seek me. And by patience, possess your souls in the midst of all this chaos. Luke 21, he says, I'm going to give an opportunity for this to turn out for your good. So when we hear prophetic words and we're going to hear all kinds of things in the last days and everybody's going to start teaching the book of Revelation now, which is great. Um, more people are getting in time teaching. And we need to because it is the last of the last days. But Jesus made it very clear what's going to happen during that time. He said right in Luke and in Mark uh, and in also Matthew 24, he said ethnic groups are going to go against ethnic groups. Ethos, the word says there, nation against nation. And the, the Hebrew and the Greek means eth ethnicity against ethnicity. All these things are going to happen. And he said mothers and uh, fathers and sons and daughters are going to hate. There's going to be more hate. Men's love will grow wax cold. But then he says, but even though there's trouble in the world, he comes back and he says, but I've overcome the world. So Jesus always ends up with a positive note. And he always gives hope in everything that he says. Even with the most difficult prophecies, Jesus ends up with hope. So today I want to really teach you how to discern, to hear God for yourself, how to discern what other people are saying, whether it's true and where it's coming from. And then thirdly, to make sure you're really in tune with the right people and the right relationships that you're around. This is a time... You know, the Bible says that we are to be around the right people. Now, listen, we're to love everybody. We love everybody. We're to honor everybody. The Bible says in Romans that we're to honor every person. And as much as it's up to us, be at peace with everyone. So we love everyone. We honor everyone. But then there's a place where sometimes you can be in certain relationships where that relationship isn't really going the way God wants it to go. And maybe that relationship is starting to become a hindrance instead of a growth or a blessing to you. And the Bible even says that we have to learn and discern. There are times where we have to pull away from certain people, away from certain things 
because they're not benefiting the growth in our life. And we're, if, we're, if we're not being benefited or that other person's not being benefited, that doesn't bring honor to God. Honor to God means that there's fruit, that there's something beneficial that's happening through relationship. That doesn't mean if you're in a relationship and it's not going well, that you're to give up. No, it just means that in that relationship, let's find out how to bring a solution to a problem and be a good listener. That's totally different. That's honoring. That's being willing to be patient to work something out, listening to the Holy Spirit, being humble, and staying in a place of honor. Honor is always looking for the best in someone. Honor is always looking, even if you're in disagreement, what can I agree with? That's what honor is about. Honor will always give you access, first, not only to the Father, it'll give you access to even people that you disagree with because your heart is like the heart of the Lord to honor people. We always want to honor people and look for the best in everyone. However, there's a time, even in an honoring system, if there's something there in that person or in that situation that you start to discern that could be a stumbling block to you and to that relationship, then you have to say, okay, maybe it's time for me to let that person go, give that person to God, don't be upset or condemn or anything, but just say, God, I think it's time for me to move forward. And you'll, you'll notice that even Jesus himself came to a point where, you know, he was with all the people speaking and one day, he said, I want you to eat my bread, eat my body, and drink my blood. And it said it offended many of them. And a lot of them left. And Jesus wasn't, it wasn't he didn't love them or he was being dishonoring. He was just letting them know that you right now, you guys are not really benefiting from really what this relationship that I have with you is for. And that's to bring fruit in your lives and to grow but they didn't want to go any further. Sometimes people don't want to go as far as you want to go. And they can start to hold you back from where God wants you to go. So you have to discern and say, oh, it might be time for me to move on and find another friend. And see, good friends or good relationships are people that you can be honest with, open with, and at the same time, have even a disagreement but somehow work out things because you really believe that God is building something fruitful from that relationship. And we all need friends. We all need people we can trust. We all need people that we can hurt with. And then and we know, hey, they're going to hurt with me. Or we, all, we need people we can rejoice with. Like last week, we were we rejoicing with Teddy because of what he went through. We rejoiced with Celeste when she came through a cancer situation. We're rejoicing with you guys when you have great praise reports. But then there's other times, maybe we're going through a struggle. Maybe there's some stuff that has come up in your life that unexpected. Can we still honor you? Can we still love you? Can we still know that we can be there for you through thick and thin? That's what God says that we want. How many want people like that around you that you can trust and they're going to be there for you? How many are not bored with me right now? Just so I know, I don't, so I don't feel rejected. Yeah. <laughs> Stop. I just did that for fun. <laughs> uh, so I want to share some things with you today that are going to excite <laughs> you. So back to this prophetic word, I went way out there to bring this back to here. So this prophetic word comes out and has shaken a lot of people. Yeah. And, and rightfully so. I mean, if, if you hear that, and a guy said he had a dream and, and he said the Lord gave him the dream. And I believe the Lord probably did give him the dream. But see, it's not necessarily just the prophetic word or the dream. The key is discerning that word and understanding that word and knowing where that word is coming from and where that word is going and how that word is to be interpreted. Because if we don't know how to test that word, interpret that word, and where that word is going, then if we just say, okay, well, I guess that's what's going to happen, and you start to go out and you're buying food and you're 
getting all this kind of stuff. Let's just let me tell you, words can be very, very powerful. But let me just preface one thing. The Bible does not say we are led by prophecies. The Bible says we are to be led by the Holy Spirit and the Word of God. So it's great to get prophecies. Thank God. We, and the Bible says don't despise prophecies. In, in fact, we need the prophetic because God has created the prophetic word to encourage. That's what it says in, in the New Covenant. It says it's, it's to exhort, to encourage, and to edify, and to build up. So a New Testament prophet, even a prophet, has to be led first by the Holy Spirit and by the word of God. And every pro prophetic word or dream must be confirmed or bear witness with the scripture and the word of God. The word of God and the Holy Spirit will never, they're always going to agree. They'll never disagree. So the spirit will that. So in the new covenant, the Bible makes it clear. Prophecy is to exhort, bring you closer to God, is to edify, to build up. And then thirdly, it's to comfort. Now, when a prophetic word comes forth, it can be a warning. There can be warnings in the New Covenant. Like Paul gave a warning when he was on the ship in Acts 27. He said, I perceive that there's a storm going to come, and we have to be really careful and throw some of the food over and get ready for this, because if we have too much weight on the ship, uh, I perceive that this ship could go down. And at first, when he said that, he used the word perceive because the Holy Spirit spoke to him by perceiving. So he perceived in his spirit and he got like a warning to be careful because there's a storm coming. Now, even though he got a warning, the warning was not to bring destruction. The warning was to bring protection. There's a big difference. See, when you get... A warning to protect, it just means just be careful, be wise, make some good decisions. But God's going to bring us through this. That's how he ended the word. But God's going to bring it, bring us through. Now, the people on the ship didn't obey him. And then the storm came. And all of a sudden, everybody started to freak. and say, oh, we're all going to die. Then, then Paul says, but wait, I got another word. Just because I got another word. I told you before that... We're going to be okay, but you didn't listen. But the Lord just spoke to me again. And this time he said to me, tell everybody on the ship, nobody's going to die. In fact, Paul, because you're on the ship, I'm going to bring favor to everybody and protect everybody because you're on the ship with them. So God always brings a positive out of a negative. So I want to encourage you today that the word that that was given, when you don't see hope in a word, right. that means you have to say, wait a second, where's the hope here? When, when, when a prophetic word, now make this a note of this, brings more fear into your life than hope into your life, that's not how God operates. Yes, God says that we are to fear the Lord, but fearing of the Lord even doesn't mean there's hopelessness. God always brings hope with, God, with his word. So we're not to put down the person who gave the word. We're, we're here to test the word, not the person. So we just say to you, I don't believe you're going to have to get guns and everything. I just believe the word I have received, the word other men of God have received. So what I did and what Pastor said is, so we go wait to hear. We wait patiently. Let's see what other people get. The first. Well, we prayed. And we prayed. Yeah. The first thing that that I sense when I talked to Pastor Sarah, when she spoke the word to me, I said, let's just wait. Let's just pray. Let's just seek the Lord and be patient. That's what we always do. And I said, I'm not getting a sense that we're to jump right into this word. So then we just waited. Then one by one, other well-known established prophets have come out and said similar things that that word Yes, could be from the Lord, but it wasn't complete in that God always gives hope. So more and more people have come out and said that. So again, through two or three witnesses, the word is confirmed. The prophets are subject to the prophets. 
I think the man that gave this was a pastor. So, so words need to be really those big time words that affect a whole nation and the whole body of Christ. Those kind of words, the Bible says, should be subject to two or the three prophets. So they need to be tested, prayed over before they're delivered. Um, so I just want to say to you, I believe that the Lord has a great future for us. Now, I don't know exactly how we're going to get there, but I can tell you, I believe things are going to be better than we think. And I, I, I have that sense inside, but I believe we're going to have to be very patient. And this is really hard for the body of Christ and for the church. The church really loves quick things. We all love quickness. And God is making sure he's slowing us down. Now let's take, let me just share two things and then I want to get into some scriptures uh, to share with you. If you want to make this note today, it says in Isaiah to be careful about haste. When you get too hasty, <laughs> that's what it says in Isaiah 26, 18. Haste, I like to say, it, haste makes waste. So we have to be very careful that we're waiting on the Lord and be patient. The Bible says through faith and patience, they obtain the promise. So here's what I want to share with you. The Lord himself, everything he did, he went to the Father first and he prayed every night he went to the Father. And the scripture says, he would wake up in the morning and he would seek the Father. He did nothing and let the Father show him. And we're going to talk about that today. Even when he came to raise Lazarus from the dead, everybody thought he was too late. And in the natural, he was. But he didn't do anything except the Father showed him. So today I'm going to talk to you about how to know those leadings. But uh, I want to share this with you as we go through this today. Everything that we're about to share today is I pray, we both pray, I wait on the Lord, we seek the Lord, we honor the Lord, we listen to the Holy Spirit because he cares about you. He wants you to hear truth that's going to benefit your life. So when I honor the Lord and give him first place, I don't go in there just for me, I go in there for you. And say, Lord, these are your sheep. They're called by your name. I want to honor them as I honor you. And when I honor the Lord, it gives me access. And you can make a note, honor gives access to the Lord. When you honor something, God gives you access to it. So when you honor his word, he'll give you access to revelation. When you honor the people he sends you to, he'll give you access to them. When you honor people that you see that are different than you are, that don't uh, maybe have the same preferences you do, but if you honor them the way God does, he will give you access to them and they will sense that you value them. That honor in your life will open them up and give you access for them to hear what you're going to say. So when I honor the Lord and I say, Lord, I want to honor your sheep, honor your people, he will give me revelation specifically for us and you when we get together and gather. <laughs> when we gather together, he's going to pour out revelation that he has for you specifically on this time. Just because we honor him and do it. Then he blesses the truth. I wish I could tell you I come up with all this amazing revelation, but I don't. I know nothing. I only know what he reveals. But thank God, you and I, we have the Holy Spirit, and he knows all things. So the Holy Spirit will give me specific words for all of you to honor you and for you to be able to take these words and you test them. You test them by the Holy Spirit. And they should bear witness with your spirit. Yes, that, can, that, I, that bears witness with me. I have a peace about that. And then the next thing that happens is God starts to affect your direction in your life. To give you wisdom and application 
not just to hear the word, but how do I apply the word? Because if I just hear the word and I don't apply the word, that's when deception comes in. So we don't want to just hear words. We want to apply the words. I just want to share this with you real quick, and then we'll get into these verses. For instance, right now, uh, restrictions have been taken off some of this, all these different states. We're pulling back, we're reopening and everything. And that's great. We want to see reopening. But see, I got a cautious from the Lord mm -hmm. that this is all too fast. Mm -hmm. I got a really strong word from the Lord. Pastor Sarah, I'll tell you, two months ago, too fast. She got it. Everything's going way too fast. Not because we don't want to gather. Not None of that. The caution is that it's not safe. Here's why. Because we are dealing with a nation that does not understand principles and how to carry them out because they would rather be hasty and defiant instead of following protocol because they don't want anybody to tell them what to do. So here's what happens. See, people think license and live, they think, oh, license gives me, I'll do what I want. I, nobody's going to tell me <laughs> what to do. I'm in, and you know what license ends up doing? A license of that kind of freedom, excessive freedom, mark it down. License will bring confinement instead of fulfillment. And here's what happens. A person that just says, I don't care. I'm going to go out. I'm not going to keep six. I'm not going to do social distance. I'm not going to do any of that. Okay, we're open now. Let's just hang out. Let's party. Let's hang out together. <laughs> Let's just go and do what we couldn't do. The heck with all this other stuff. See, and this is what happens. When people don't have honor. That's right. When they don't have honor in their heart. And they don't honor principles. Not just the word of God. Principles. When you dishonor principles and you want to say, I'm going to be free. Nobody's going to tell me what to do. Well, you think you're free. No, you're bound. You're bound by a principle of rebellion that is going to take you into a place of confinement instead of liberty. You will never be fulfilled. That's good. Amen. Amen. See, here's what liberty is. Liberty says, I will bring regulations to you from my word to tell you what not to do so that you'll be free so nothing will hinder you from being the full blessing that you deserve. Amen. You know, the Bible says there's pleasure in sin for a season. But the Lord's trying to tell you, it might seem good. It might be fine. But I'm telling you, if you stay in that, you're going to reap what you don't want. It's going to eventually bring yeah. a problem and chaos in your life. And I'm a good God. I'm not trying to hold you back. Right. I'm trying to protect you. I don't give you a regulation to take your freedom i give you regulation to keep your freedom that's right i know what's the best for you i'm the father i created you so here we go so people they start to go out and they go well we're just going to party we're going to hang and the next thing you know every state that is reopened COVID's back up it's all spiking again and guess what there for a while it was all being held back. Mm -hmm. It was all being held back. Why? Because everybody was in a place where they needed to be so God could work his plan. Right. But see, we don't have the discipline. <laughs> it's true. We just don't have the discipline in America because we don't want any regulations. We don't want anybody to tell us what to do. So God says, all right, go ahead. Go out and have fun. Just do what you wanted to do. Don't listen. And listen, God put these regulations in, not the CDC, because God's trying to protect life because he wants people saved. God's into saving life. Am I on a soapbox? Go for it. I am. <laughs> so I just really believe that that's why we need wisdom, direction, and leadership. Nobody wants to be more free than me or you. I want everybody where we don't have to be. I mean, but 
for the benefit and the honor of other people. I have to do that. Right. I have to do that because I care about other people. Right. And I want to honor God and honor the regulations. Now, of course, uh, I think God's going to bring things around. I do believe there's hope. I do believe everything's going to be right at the right time. But timing is so important with God. So we have to be patient. We have to be uh, willing to, to listen. So I want to take us to Proverbs 15, 23 and give you just a couple more verses for today and, a, and a, an illustration. So Proverbs 15, 23, we're going to put that up on the screen and we're going to talk about how to discern and talk about this and the timing of God. So it says a man has joy by the answer of his mouth. So in other words, Proverbs is saying, when I know the right thing to do, and I get the right answer for my question, and I'm discerning the right way, it brings joy to my life. I have joy on the inside, but I want joy on the outside where I'm living. Uh, I want to have some joy. So I'm praying today that God's going to bring some answers to your mouth, and that you're going to say some things to bring answers to yourself that's going to bring joy to you. And then it says this, and a word spoken in due season, how good it is. So we need a word spoken to us in due season. And how many know right now we need a word? Yeah. We need a word right now in the season we're in and how good it is. So we're going to do that. And today I'm believing for that. So then in Hebrews 5.14, we're going to put that up. And we're going to just read some scriptures here. Hebrews 5.14, it says this, But solid food belongs to those who are of full age. Those are people that are mature, people that are seeking the Lord, people that are not tossed to and fro by what every opinion or every news station says. They're hearing voices from all over. They're not, that doesn't move them. They are first moved by what God says in his word and the relationships that they're in. So he said, but solid food belongs to those who are of mature age. That is those who by reason of use, reason of use or have been tested, reason of use have had their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. So this is a person that's been developed in the spirit, developed in listening, being tested, trying the word, learning the word has lived out the word, has made mistakes, learned from mistakes, but has grown to the place where their mind and their thinking is so renewed with the word of God and the Holy Spirit that they've learned to discern through practice and exercise to know what's good and to know what's evil. And if we don't need that today, I don't know what we need. We need to know what's good and we need to know what's right we need to know what to do and what not to do. Now let's go to our next verse, Isaiah 50. Uh, we're cruising now. Isaiah 50, and I want to read this to you. It says this, the Lord God. Now this is something that I want you to hear very loudly. This is what the Lord Jesus himself is using as an example. This would be after the Lord prayed, and the Lord says, I want you to honor me and follow me and do what I'm doing so that you do this. So this is what the Lord would do himself when he would seek him, when he would pray, and when he would listen to the Father. Watch. The Lord God has given me the tongue of the learned, that I should know how to speak a word in season. This isn't to Pastor Dan, because this is to all of us. It's not just to Dan and Sarah. All of us. He's saying, all of you, I have given the tongue of the learned that you'll know how to speak and you'll have a word in season and not just for yourself, but to him who is weary. And the Lord says, I'm going to speak to you. And right now there is more weariness in the world than we have ever seen. People are weary from the pandemic, weary from racism, weary from this, weary from injustice, weary from all kinds of things. People are getting worn down and they're getting wearied in their mind because they don't have solution. Everybody's having table talks, table. That's all great. 
conversation is important. We need to listen. We need to hear. And we need to pour out all of our heart. But somewhere in the middle of all that, we still need a word. We need a word right now to bring us out of weariness. And God is saying, for those who will listen to me, those who will seek me, I have a word for you. I have a word right in the middle of this pandemic. I have a word right in the middle of all this chaos. I have a word in this whole political unrest. I have a word right now that I can speak to you. It's going to bring you out of your weariness. That's why he said to Habakkuk and all the prophets, he said, whatever you guys do, you come up here. Yeah. Come up, get away from all the noise. Pull back. Come up on the rampart. Stop looking at out there. I, I see all the chaos. I, all, I see the pandemic. I see the injustice. I see all the stuff that's going on. But he says, I want to awaken you. I'm going to wake up your mind. I'm going to make you sober. And I'm going to let you see. And I'm going to give you a word to bring you out of this weariness. In fact, I'm going to bring joy to you. Morning is enduring right now, but joy is going to come. That's right. Because I'm a God of joy. I'm a God of hope. I'm a God of comfort. But God, don't you see what's going on? Don't you see I'm wearing a mask? <laughs> but you see all these things God knows. But then he says he awakens me morning by morning. So he awakened us this morning. And then he's awakened my ear. Turn to your wife or somebody you're there in your little group and say, Thank you, Lord, you're awakening my ear. Thank you, Lord, you're awakening my ear. It awakens my ear every morning to every hear. Because yep. his sheep hear his voice. And the Lord God has opened my ear. Hallelujah. The Lord says he's opened our ear and I was not rebellious. Mm -hmm. See, there it is. That's good. I was not rebellious. I said, I'm not going to go. God, you know, you better do this. You better do that. If I don't understand this. No, I was not rebellious. I came in there surrendered, teachable, ready to hear. I go to God every day as if I don't know anything. Yeah. I humble my heart under the mighty hand of God. And he will direct me. I go in there like I don't know anything. Like I don't even know what's going on, Lord. But I know you do. And I am going to surrender to you. I'm not going to be rebellious. I'm not going to try to figure. See, rebellious goes in a lot of things. Rebellious means I will try to do things that I think is the right way to do it. I'm going to figure out my own life. I'm going to do what I want to do today. I'm going to try to handle this person this way. Uh, I'm going to handle my family. I'm going to handle my job. God, I'm just going to do what I want. No, no. Don't go in there like that. Don't go in there like, oh, I got it. Go in there like, <laughs> I don't, I don't got it. And especially for people that are very smart yeah. and intellectual, that's very hard for people that have a lot of knowledge and intellect because they can figure things out really well. They're very good at deducting things real quick. And sometimes that's the most difficult time to really be able to trust God. Right. So we have to be careful and say, Lord, keep me teachable. Yeah. Keep me open. Don't let me get into myself too much. Don't let me get into my own little pity party. Oh, I can go off on this. See, because the other thing we can do is we can say, oh, I can't believe what's happening to me. I can't believe what happened in my life. Then you start bringing up your past. Then you start, <laughs> then you start going over all the reasons why you're upset. Then all of a sudden you start to, I'm rejected. I'm hurt. You know, here I go again. Now somebody's going to hurt me. Somebody just says a little word to you. Oh, I can't believe. And then, you know, what? and then rejection always opens the door for doubt and unbelief. Yeah. Every time you get rejected, if you've been all your life rejected, as soon as, you're, as soon as you hear a word that's going to reject you, oh, God forgot me, or God doesn't love me, all those things are forms that try to cause you to rebel in this sense. But you're not a, a blatant rebellious person. I'm not saying that. But they're very subtle. They're very subtle in causing you to forget God, yeah. how good God is. Let me share something with you that I had to really learn. One morning, I was complaining. I know none of you do that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just complaining about things. I was complaining about my back. I was just some things going on in my life. 
just complaining that things weren't going fast enough and and just and I was looking around and uh, just thinking oh this is it and then the next thing comes up as soon as you start complaining the next thing that you start to think uh, this isn't even gonna ever work out then everything starts the future starts to look more gloomy everything just complaining turns into oh disaster is gonna happen you know, <laughs> all that it just gravitates into into the wrong kind of meditation but one day I was just doing that and the Holy Spirit said to me Dan you need to talk about God's goodness right now I said what he said just say God is good just say it yep. say it don't right in the middle of all the complaining like I'm like all upset and I'm expecting the Lord to rebuke me he said say God is good say it I said God is good <laughs> said say it again God is good <laughs> say it again I, I know what it's about God with threes you know, I feel like Peter he says to Peter do you love me you love me three times Peter gets three sheet three everything so uh, I guess God I probably need threes <laughs> some of these guys could get it the one time I need three so he says say it again say it a third time God God is good and he said to me at the third time when I said it, something went off in my spirit where the spirit just spoke to me like clearly and said, when you talk more about the goodness of God, he said, it yeah. will continually steer you away from, watch this, rebellion. And then he said this, temptation. And then he said the third thing, sin yeah that's what he said when you talk about the goodness of god and you think about the goodness of god how god's been good to you how god's always taken care of you how god's always there for you how god loves you all the gifts he gave you all the friends he gave you the wife he gave you the goodness he gave you if he said you think on the goodness of god and you keep thinking about how good god is he said everything around you that's trying to cause you to rebel and complain will fall on its knees and drop and leave you. And he said, if you will talk about the goodness of God every day when you get up, yeah. every day his mercies are new every morning. He said, why do you think I said that to you? Because mercies for the Lord is good and his mercy endures forever. Why do you think I had the troops dance out there in front of the big army of a million people and what did I tell them to say all I said to them was say this for the Lord is good and his mercy endures forever and what happened the goodness released his covenant released his blessing and everybody in that army turned on themselves and killed themselves and we were outnumbered by a million and the, the Lord's goodness caused confusion in the enemy's camp. Can Amen. somebody say hallelujah? Hallelujah. Woo, I preached that happy. <laughs> that goodness keeps you out of rebellion, keeps you teachable, and brings the blessing, keeps your ears open, and causes you to honor God, to hear him, and he will pour out things on you yeah. that you can't even imagine about your present and your future whether you're to be with somebody, whether you're not to be with, and then he'll show you and discern the root of your issue. If there's a problem, he'll start showing you what the problem really is and why it's there. Somebody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. I have a few more minutes. I know I preached a little bit over, That's but good. I feel good. Let's go to John. John 11, and we'll finish right here. Are you all enjoying this today so far? Now we're going to really get into it. Now we're going to give you an example that you're going to really excited, be excited about. So here's this incredible, great narrative and story. Oh, I'll use the word narrative. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! So we're going to pivot over into, this is some of my pet stuff, and all these trends. Now we're going to pivot over to Jesus, and we're going to, we're going to pivot into the narrative of where Jesus <laughs> 
end of the narrative. At the end of the day, you now it's just, that's enough. Okay, um, so anyway, this is the narrative about Jesus and Lazarus. So we're going to talk about this for just a few minutes to, to sum up everything today. Then next week, I want to take you a little bit further. Now we're going to do, uh, we, I think we have, what, two more weeks in July? Two more weeks of guidance, and then in, in August, we're going to start a brand new teaching, but, but there are two more weeks in guidance because it's so important for where we are. Um, so here's Jesus. He's over with his disciples, and he gets the news that Lazarus is sick, and uh, at this point, Jesus hears about this. So in John 11, 3, let's read this, and when Jesus heard that about Lazarus, he said, this sickness will not end in death for Lazarus, but will bring glory and praise to God. Now notice, even in the worst uh, situation, the Lord brings hope again. And I'd like to say, even in this pandemic, and even though there's been death, and even though there's been a lot of pain, somehow, some way, this is going to turn out to bring glory and praise to God. Can anybody say amen to that? Amen. It says this, this will reveal the greatness of the Son of God of what takes place. Now, even though Jesus loved Mary and Martha and Lazarus, now notice Lazarus was actually a friend of Jesus, which is really amazing. And then it says he loved them. It says, but he remained where he was for two more days. Now, see, right there, we take a look at that. And we say, well, why did Jesus stay two more days when he knew this was a critical situation? Because the father told him, he went to the father in the morning, he listens to the father, he stays in tune to the father, like we said in Isaiah, and he had his ear open all the time because he sought the Lord in the morning. All day long, his ear was open to hear what the father would say, because the Bible says Jesus did nothing unless the father showed him to do it. So it says... He waited two more days. Why? Because the father said, wait, wait two more days. Then finally, on the third day, he said to his disciples, he said to his disciples on the third day, it says this. He said to his disciples, come, it's time. Now watch those words. Disciples, come, it's time. So the third day was the right time. Everybody Mary, Martha, even the disciples did not understand why it took Jesus three days to say it's time. The reason it took three days is because the Father had a plan that nobody knows about that's going on behind the scenes. That's why we have to be patient because behind the scenes and the purpose the Father has in the spirit realm is always going to supersede what we're looking at in the natural realm. So then Jesus added, Lazarus, our friend, has just fallen asleep. Now, here's Jesus saying that even though you guys think Lazarus is dead, in the spirit realm, I don't see him as physically dead. I see him that he's fallen asleep. So Jesus was seeing everything by the spirit. The disciples were seeing everything by the natural. Everything. Because they kept looking at what everybody was saying, listening to everybody else, but they didn't have their ears open to hear the Spirit. They couldn't even hear and understand. Because later, Jesus finally says to him, after the disciples, oh, no, no, if he's sleeping, that means he's going to get better. He'll be better. <laughs> he's he's going to get better, Jesus. You don't understand. He's just sleeping. That means he's going to get better, right? Because he's sleeping. Jesus said, then Jesus finally says, no, he's dead. <laughs> Jesus, I'll tell you. So Jesus finally says, no, he's not sleeping. He's actually dead. But he is sleeping in the spirit. But you guys don't get that. I got to move forward. So then, <laughs> so then we're going to move forward to verse 32. So when Jesus finally arrives, he comes outside the village. Mary greets him, falls at his feet. And the first thing Mary says, Lord, if only you had been here, my brother would have not died. So right away, Mary, now here, Mary as we know, is the one that was always the seeker of the Lord. So Mary herself 
really didn't quite see what the Lord was doing. So she herself even missed it. So the Lord said, so she even said, if you would have been here, my brother wouldn't have died. And we all have been there. I've all done that. We, Lord, where were you? If you would have just been here before, now look where we're at. The Lord is always right on time. And he will be right on time with this pandemic. I want to encourage you. The Lord is going to be right on time. And ultimately, when this thing comes to the way God's going to turn it out to be, God will have the final say, and he will get all the glory. You can be assured of that. And then Jesus made it plain to them, Lazarus is dead. So he had to finally say it to everybody, Lazarus is dead. Because he wanted now, because that, that's what they want to know. Okay, yeah, he is dead. And for your sake, I love this. He says, and for your sake, I'm glad I wasn't there. Because now you're going to have another opportunity to see who I am. Now you're going to really see who I am, not who you think I am. I'm going to show you who I really am. And God wants to show you and I today, I'm going to show you who I really am through all this trial we're in, all this testing, all this that we need patience. I'm going to show you who I really am. And we're going to speak more on this next week, but I'm just going to give you the overview because of time. And then he says this. He said, I'm going to show you who I am so that you will trust in me. So come, let's go and see him. Look at the positive words Jesus says. Let's go and see. Now, how many would ever be excited about let's go and see somebody who's dead? Now, Jesus is saying, come, let's go, because I want to show you as you see what I'm going to do. I'm going to go. Let's go see him. So they rolled away the heavy stone. And then the first thing he, Jesus says, Father, thank you that you have heard my prayer. Yeah. Father, thank you. The first words out of Jesus' mouth is, Father, you led me here. Father, you're the one that told me to wait. Father, you're the said... But now you're going to show your glory to everybody. So, Father, thank you that you have heard my prayer. For you listened. Let me get this on my thing here. So he says, you heard my For you listen to every word I speak. Now, so that these who stand here with me will believe that you have sent me to the earth as your messenger. I will use the power you have given me. And then with a loud voice, Jesus shouted with authority, Lazarus. Come out of the tomb. And from that day forward, many of those who had come to visit Mary believed in him. For they had seen with their own eyes this amazing miracle. Yeah. So way back, everybody said, Jesus, why were you late? Why weren't you here before? Why has this taken so long? Why isn't this happening the way we think it should happen? Because Jesus has a better plan. It's going to bring the glory to the Father and glory to him. And we are all going to believe in Jesus more effectively than ever when we come forth out of this at the very end. So I don't have all the answers for you today, but I will tell you this. We're going to come out of this and God's going to be glorified through all this. Just be patient. God's timing is going to be right. And even right now, I'd like to submit to all of you a word of hope today. I will truly say to you that everything that looks dead right now is about to change. Amen. I'm here to tell you, I believe we're coming into a season of joy. What do you think about that? Yep. That's the word I'm getting. I'm getting that we're coming into a season of joy. I'm getting that morning has lasted for the night, but joy comes in the morning. I believe that in Daniel where it says, and then I'm a Daniel. No, I'm just, <laughs> that was a joke. It was a joke. <laughs> but I do sense the Lord says this to me. He said to Daniel, he said, I'm the one who changes the times and the seasons. So I'm believing right now a season of change is coming yeah. from morning into joy. Now, I don't know exactly what that's going to look like. But I will tell you that joy is coming. And that we're entering into it. I sense it's going to be happening 
uh, around August. I might be wrong, but that's what I'm getting. It could be before then. Uh, August is eight is the beginning. I just said there's a shift yeah. going into joy. Um, and I, I say Lazarus is coming forth. And I say life is coming forth. So I think there's a shift of joy, of resurrection power yeah. uh, coming forth. And in fact, that's what I believe in August. I'm going to be sharing about the shift into the joy and resurrection, the power that I'm going to uh, come off of this and go into that. I believe we're going to go into a new level of righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. I believe that the Holy Ghost is going to be poured out in incredible signs, wonders, miracles. I believe people are going to see more healings than ever. I believe there's going to be incredible anointing released in, in August. I keep getting August, so that's what I'm going to say. We'll testify the Spirit, but I believe there's a definite shift in that season. I believe the blessings are coming, joy is coming. I believe the anointing on the body of Christ for those who want it are going to see amazing, amazing things happening through their lives. I believe people are going to be speaking to people who are weary, yeah. and, and they're going to see them get a word. You're going to have a word in season. Words are going to come forth because you've been patient and God has prepared you for this time to bring hope to the weary, honor and uh, blessing to the weary, and they're going to just be totally touched by the presence of God. That's what I really believe. So I have a, I have a real hope inside of joy. And as far as the, how that relates to the particulars of the pandemic and all that, this is way beyond pandemic. This is more in the spirit realm yeah. of what God's doing behind the scenes. Then eventually it will show up in the natural realm. Right. But God first has to clean out the church before he goes. Even the Bible says he starts with the church. He's cleaning out things in the church that need to be removed. Amen. And he's bringing in what needs to be brought in. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many here feel a good change in your life? And how many are ready for some joy? Hallelujah. How many are in the presence of the Lord? There's fullness of joy. I'm feeling a joy anointing even now. Maybe God's given us a preview of it. Woo, weeping indoors for the night, but joy comes in the morning. Somebody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Wow, I preached myself happy. <laughs> I know I preached a little longer today, but I think we needed that. Yeah. I think we needed the joy. I'm I'm tired of this pandemic. I'm tired of people getting infected that shouldn't be getting infected because we're impatient. When you go out there, keep your distance and, and take joy in doing it. Yeah. Just say, thank you, Lord. I put on my mask. Don't be like me. I Don't complain. The Lord said, don't complain. Put your mask on. Say, thank you, Lord. Be joyful. And as soon as we're joyful about things, God will remove right. things. That's what God's waiting for. Yep. And, you know, uh, you know, we just have to be really, really understanding. You know, I was reading about, and I'm sure some of you sports guys, about Scott Kingry. Here's a healthy 24-year-old guy that gets around people and stuff, and probably they didn't distance as well as they even said that. He said he probably got too close to people, didn't know, and he ends up getting infected, and it wiped him out for a month. A month and see all these things are because we have to be obedient right now but joy will come and we're going to get through it amen, amen. liberty brings fulfillment license brings confinement that's good that's the word of the lord when i follow the lord's word and i give him praise he'll open up the door if he tells me what to do what not to do i'm not going to do what he says not to do do, do I have to, do am I want to do it? Maybe, but I'm lovingly going to obey him. Speak the word. Hallelujah. Father, we just pray uh, that the word that went out today will go strong into every person. We honor you, Lord. We honor your word. And we honor your people. Thank you. And let them hear your voice clearly as we spoke today. That they in the morning will honor you. And you will awaken their ear. And they will hear and that they will discern good and what's not good 
and they will know how you're leading. And we just praise you and thank you. Whatever I don't know what situation every person is in, or we don't understand all things, but we do know this. We know that you are the God of all, and you are the God that knows every hair on every person's head. And your word says not one hair will be lost on their head. And I thank you that every one of these people are valuable to you, that they are hungry. They came on here out of hunger and they want to hear your voice and they want to be pleasing and they want to know your will and they want to know your plan. And I thank you that they're going to hear your voice. Your spirit will bear witness with their spirit. And even today, we just praise you and thank you for what you're doing in every life with all their friendships, with all their relationships, uh, who they're to be with, who they're not to be with, what they're to do, what they're not to do, that they will discern more clearly and accurately than ever. And I just praise you and thank you that they will be careful to make sure that they test all things that they hear with your word and with the spirit. And then lastly, we just praise you and thank you for their faithfulness. Thank you. Thank you for them wanting to come on every week and tell their friends. Thank you. And we thank you for all the people that uh, they know that can hear this message as well, so that you will be glorified, Jesus. That's all we want. We want you to be glorified in everything that's said and done. I pray protection and peace and provision over every family and every person. And we praise you and thank you in these times, Lord, that are uncertain in the natural, that you are the certainty, you're the rock, and that you will bring us forth in exactly the way that you want, that we're going to come forth the way you want. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. amen. And uh, just want to say, I know Pastor Sarah has something she wants to share here. Just want to share with the giving, to that we are thankful. Every week, we are thankful for the people that give. And uh, it's been really a blessing to have that from all of you. And uh, we just appreciate it. Uh, the Bible says God loves a cheerful giver. And he said, when you honor the Lord with the first fruits, he said, he will bless you. You'll have provision. So just keep, keep going. And we just pray for blessing over yes, you, that God will provide all of your needs. Yes, sir. According to his riches and glory. And uh, we're continuing just to uh, seed into all types of other ministry. We are, we're doing what God's told us to do, and God's been faithful. He's bringing in what we need every week, and we're trusting that. And uh, we're trusting he's bringing in what you need. And uh, we're in agreement, and we're blessed, and you're blessed. Uh, we give, and we would never expect you to do what we don't do. And... Uh, we praise God for every one of you and thank you for your faithfulness and for you that maybe are learning to give and have never given before. Just pray about it. Uh, seek the Lord. I'll tell you one thing. Blessings are waiting for you that you can't get. Don't hold on to what God gave you. Give it. Then he can take it way beyond what you could imagine. And in difficult times like this, this is the best time to trust to trust and test God. Just take that seed and give it and God will bless it. And uh, we thank God for all of you. You can just give online. You'll On your email you saw, just go to the website, um, hit the give button and it explains it's real easy. Or if you want to send it, some people have, that's great. But we want to say thank you and bless you. So Pastor Sarah is going to finish out. All right. And I just wanted to give a positive great um, update so far. So as you guys know that um, we've partnered with Unlikely Heroes to do Move for Freedom. You guys should have all gotten the email. We've talked about it every week, but um, we are, there are some new people on. So just to give you a little uh, tidbit, Unlikely Heroes um, has helped rescue and restore kids out of um, sex trafficking. So it's really an honor. They're doing something called Move for Freedom where you exercise um, in an effort to raise donations, 100% of the donations go to the kids um, for medical care, food, uh, treatment, you know, a variety of other things. Um, and so um, we are doing that. I'm exercising for it. So um, 
for the people who have given, we're more than halfway there for the goal. So I just wanted to thank you, speak blessing over you, and um, just remind you guys to go on. Um, every, every bit counts and it goes right to the kids. So thank you for the ones who have given. Amen. Oh, one last thing too before we go. Uh, Teddy, can you hear me, Teddy? There's Teddy. I, I wish I could hear you, Ted. We can't, for some reason, we can't get the feedback. How is your report? Is it a thumbs up or? Thumbs up, thumbs yay! Up. That means Teddy got a great report on the cancer. All gone? All gone. All cancer gone. free, yay! There it is. Our Aww. second great report. Aww. That's awesome, Teddy. Thank you, Jesus. Hopefully next week we'll get the audio fixed or however we're going to do it because so we can hear everybody. We I want to try to get a little more interaction going. Uh, so next week we're going to try to move or change it a little bit. We're, <laughs> we're going to try to have a little bit more. We can have some interaction online where we can all hear each other and have a little bit of fun. Uh, but we'll get that set next week. Just pray for everything to work out. It's great to see all of you online. Yeah. See you, Monique. Good to see you. Yeah. Dar, Good to see Teddy, Nick. I Shane. think that's I think that's Nick. No, that's Shane. Uh, who Nick? Oh, that's Nick. Yeah. Yeah, Nick. <laughs> Just to say hi to Nick. <laughs> I can't see you, Nick, but that's great, Shane. Everybody, Shane's your ship's coming in. Told you that yesterday. I had a lot of good yeah. stuff on that. And also, lastly, for all of you, here's a great word to finish the day. Here's a great word. I wrote this on my little note here, and I want to read this to you. Um, here it is. It says in Proverbs, a word fitly spoken is like apples of gold in setting, settings of silver. Isn't that a great word? So all of you, this day, the Lord says, here's his word for you. His word for you is be encouraged. For I am with you, I go before you, and I have perfected that which concerns you, and I am bringing you into the land of the living, and you will see my joy and my peace in your life way beyond what you could think or ask. That's what the word is for all of you. We bless all you guys. You're the awesome, amazing, wonderful, kind. Go tell your friends next week to tune in. We notice there's a lot more people that actually view the video or the Zoom after we get off. So there's a lot of people watching that you know, aren't even on Sunday, but that's great. Just keep telling everybody. Uh, it, it's great to see how many people are watching. And we're going to keep growing and growing and we're going to share more and more ideas with you as we go of ways to interact and communicate. We're getting our little plan together. So hopefully uh, all of you will be encouraged. We do miss you being physically, but this is the next best thing. At least we can see you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Although some of you like to be behind the phones, but that's fine. We like to see but you. We though. like to see you. So <laughs> I'm a, like a face person, but, yeah. but if you want to be behind your phone, we get it. Some people maybe not have the ability to do that, but we're so thankful for all of you. And thank you again for tuning in and thank you for your giving. Uh, thank God for your giving. And we just bless you and thank you that God will supply all of your needs. If there's anybody on here with a financial situation, let us know. We'll pray for you. We'll believe for you. But mm -hmm. God is blessing. So thank you for your giving. Thank you for your support. And uh, we do have needs as a, as a group, as a church. So yeah. it, is, it is important that if you can see, that would be great. Uh, because we have ongoing needs so far so good God's blessing everything we're putting our hand to he's really he is really blessing uh, the zoom it's been fantastic so we want to say thank you Lord for your fruit and for all these people bless you any last thing you want to say to everybody have a great week enjoy the joy week. of the Lord stay in touch with us if you need <laughs> anything stay in touch with the number let us know stay in touch with each other yep be safe because you will be and thank you, Ethel. I didn't get to say anything to you, but the Lord told me to tell you. He's protecting you, keeping you, and I see a promotion yeah. coming for you. Yep. Amen. Amen. That's it. That's it. I'm done.
You're done. All right. Bless Love you all. Guys. Thank you. You are the best. Bye, guys. You are the best. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>